From dull sim to dull bin, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is um, actually. Joining us today, we have Alex Schmidt. Hello. We have Zach Oyama. Hello. And Haley Mancini. I'm ready to lose aggressively. Oh, come on now. We don't know if you'll lose aggressively. <laughs> All right, I'll lose cowardly. <laughs> <laughs> Good, a nice cowardly loss. That's yeah. what we're hoping for. <laughs> Great. Well, you two have been on before. Alex, you are new to this game, um, but the rules are very simple. Uh, and if you're watching for the first time at home, uh, this is how it works. These are incorrect statements about the things that you know and love. It's up to you to find what's wrong, buzz in, and correct me. All your corrections must be preceded with the phrase, um, actually. If you don't say that, I won't give you the point. Um, and you can interrupt me at any point in the question. Sound good? Sounds yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll just go ahead and jump right in then. Uh, here's our first statement. In Disney's The Little Mermaid, Ursula, the eight-tentacled sea witch, doesn't just manipulatively trade for Ariel's voice, but seeks to overthrow the entire kingdom of Atlantica. However, in the original Hans Christian Andersen story, while the sea witch does trade for the Little Mermaid's voice, she isn't an antagonist and doesn't appear in the story after the deal is made. Yes, Zach. Um, actually, she has more than eight tentacles. She does not have more than eight tentacles. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, she has less than eight tentacles. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> why did I? Why was I so specific? <laughs> <laughs> How many tentacles does Ursula have? I, I would guess like six. Yeah, she has six. Hey, there we go. She, oh. she has six. I bet I know why. Yeah, I bet you probably do know why. It's, a, it's very difficult to do eight articulating tentacles. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, it's, so uh, in animation, so you would want to do six. Yeah, it's just like, this oh, is I too see. hard. Yes. Yeah, uh, you know, you can sort of count her arms, perhaps, as, as, as seven and eight for, for the full I octopus I guarantee thing. that was discussed. I bet that they were oh, like, wow. the, no, the arms will take care of the eight, yeah. but they'll articulate differently, so it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so technically not an octopus body, technically a sextopus body. Mm. Um, I feel like you'll never go broke betting that Disney is wrong. Like you'll never, <laughs> yeah. you'll never run out of what? money. Um, if you're actually, like... you definitely will go broke betting Disney is wrong. They have the biggest lawyers in the world. Oh no! Like, oh, no. <laughs> they're gonna come for us. They're, they're already here. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's a point for Alex. Clerics in Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition are holy warriors and spellcasters whose powers are fueled by the deities they worship. There are a wide array of gods you can worship in D&D 5e, but they're divided into divine domains like Grave, Order, Life, Light, Love, Arcana, and Trickery, which have built-in abilities associated with them. Uh... Yes, Zach. Um, actually, love is not a category. That's correct. Yeah. Love is not a domain in the 5th edition, uh, at least not the one that, you can, you, that clerics can use to draw power from, uh, which feels like it should be. I like, know, it should yeah. if, if you look in like, any sort of, like, so many pieces of fiction, it's like, it's like, but you know what the greatest power is? Yeah. Love. Love. <laughs> well, what, you know, Captain Planet, they'd be nothing without heart. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> also, I love, I will say, in the 5th in the fifth edition, yeah. in, under clerics, by the way, they go into that it's very important for you to understand the backstory of the cleric. They're like, were you left as a baby? Uh, at the, you know, or were you, or did you develop this way? Did you turn away from your parents? Why like, are you they, so religious? Yes, Explain exactly. yourself. Like, it's very... <laughs> Was there just some cool youth pastor and you thought like, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the thing for me. Clerics are just all right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and then if you're a barbarian or something, I don't know, I'm just mad. Like, that's all you need. <laughs> yeah. Don't need anything else. In the episode Marge Be Not Proud, Bart becomes obsessed with an ultra-violent video game called Bone Storm, whose slogan is, buy me Bone Storm or go to hell. Unfortunately for Bart, his family never buys him the game. He visits Millhouse, who is playing Bone Storm under the name Thrill House, and asks what? the- I'm uh, um, actually, he's under the name Thrill Ho. That is correct. Because yeah. <laughs> he ran you. out of space, Yeah, he ran right? out yeah, of space. So yeah. Yeah. I knew that's what it was going to be, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you started like answering the it? question, I was like, it's going to be Thrill Ho. It's going to be about Thrill Ho. I would say, fun, <laughs> uh, fun fact about me, if I would get a tattoo, it would be Thrill Ho. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. But you're you're already committed to not getting a tattoo, I'm so you can only committed. dream about... I could donate blood at any time. <laughs> <laughs> that's my superpower. <laughs> <laughs> they should let you put down Thrill Ho at the blood bank, though. They should. Yeah, like, it's really Thrill Ho. In my own blood. So, yeah. what's your blood type? Thrill Ho. <laughs> Thrill Ho positive. <laughs> what an accurate representation of of uh, that like 
gaming and that oh, era. Gaming. Whereas oh, yeah. it's like, we can't, you, you only have this many characters. You gotta deal with that. Yeah, you know? you're just yeah. gonna have to name it something that fits in there. Or like if you ever got managed to get like a high score in an arcade and just like rushing to be like, oh, I gotta put these initials in here. Yep. Or the number of just becomes like A, 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 A. Yeah, or if you're me, you just write Zach. You piece of shit. Never been a problem in my life. Never been a problem for me. I mean, I feel like that was, by the way, a choice by them to make it so hard to put your letters in within the time. Yeah. You go through this whole game, you've proven that you deserve to be on the leaderboard, and yet, when it's time to put your name in, they're like, take that. Well, I'm sure it's like, hey, listen, kid, you've been hogging this, you've been yeah. hogging this machine from all from these idiots who are who are gonna be feeding quarters I mean, into it left and give right. Me those yeah, give me those quarters. You have like, four <laughs> seconds to write your name. Yeah, no, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Give, get, put some idiot in here. <laughs> that's that's just a new arcade game. It's just yeah. write your name. Write your name as fast <laughs> as you can. High score. Most accurate name. <laughs> <laughs> you have two seconds to put your high your high score no. name in. Uh, well, uh, that question goes to Haley. Our next question is a fan submitted questions. So this is something that one of the one of the fans sent us in for, for you to answer. And this one comes to us from Cameron.dexter. Thank you, Cameron.dexter. 1981 novel Who Censored Roger Rabbit was eventually adapted into the film Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but the two plots diverged greatly. In the novel, Detective Eddie Valiant is trying to hunt down animated cartoon character Roger Rabbit's killers, with his only clue is the speech balloon of Roger's last words found at the scene of his demise. That all sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> it is neat to know that's from a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had no um, idea. <laughs> um, actually, it doesn't diverge much. <laughs> it's exactly the same. It's the same. Uh, no, no. Incredible. All right. Well, you know, got to start it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, actually, the book's title is something like much more violent, like who killed Roger Rabbit or something. <laughs> yeah. Who annihilated yeah. Roger Rabbit? Yeah. What <laughs> happened to his corpse? Who desecrated the corpse of Roger who Rabbit? Who fucked up Roger <laughs> Rabbit? <laughs> who defenestrated yeah. Roger Rabbit? Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with the monster who mutilated the body of Roger Rabbit? His family is waiting for his body, and we can't give it to him because the coroner's office hasn't released it yet. It takes up wow. the whole cover. Yeah. 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 Like, when when does the story start? Um, actually, uh, that's not his only clue because he talks to Roger as a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, incorrect. No, no. Felt right. Yeah. I, I, I want to uh, see that. Alex. Um, actually, it's not a speech balloon. It's one of those little thought balloons. Uh, instead. Ooh, interesting. No, no. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, I'm, I'm just pitching say, now. Oh, yeah. I just want to write it. That would be a cool yeah. story. Yeah. I would say no one got this one. Uh, the answer I was looking for here is that uh, in the novel, Roger wasn't animated. He's like a comic strip character, uh, not oh. a cartoon. Oh. Hence the speech bubble, uh, that, which is why, oh. like in in the um, in the novel, like comic strip characters like speak into speech bubbles, and like those are like ah. things that, that people can see. So what like the clues left to see in the crime is like essentially like last words in physical form uh, right. that are that are there. Um, oh, yeah. that was tricky. It is wow. tricky. That yes. was tricky. I do yeah. say, I do specifically yeah. say animated cartoon character. But yeah, definitely a, a semantic difference that is a little tricky. And with that, we will move on to our first shiny question. Shiny questions, like shiny Pokemon, just a little bit different, a little bit rare, same number of points. This is a game called Tag Out. So uh, what we're going to do here, on the other side of your board, uh, you will see uh, a series of movie posters, uh, and we've removed uh, the taglines from them and sort of put them on the side. So it's you to match the tagline uh, for the movie with the specific movie poster. In this particular case, these are all Star Trek movies. Oh, uh, no. So go, a <laughs> oh. go ahead and flip these over, and let's take a look at those movies. Uh, all right, <laughs> you're both comparing answers like the bad kids at the back of the class. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Um, all right, we'll, we'll go down the line, uh, and I'll reveal at the end what the right. answers were and, and how many each person got. So, Alex, we'll start with you. Tell us, tell us what these taglines are. Here we go. So I'm, I'm almost certain of insurrection and undiscovered country. The rest of them I'm a little bit guessing. Okay. Also, some of them are, are very insane. Yeah. Zach. 
Here what, here's what I have. Okay. Why are they putting seatbelts in theaters this summer <laughs> as first? Uh -huh. This is the easily the worst one. So I put it with what felt like a bad poster. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then everything else was a guess. So you're not a fan of why are they putting seatbelts in the theater this it's summer? It's so, I mean, it just, yeah. I, I think it's great for sure. <laughs> but. Good, it does good. feel old as hell. <laughs> yeah. like, right. It yeah. also has nothing to do with the ship that has no seatbelts at all. <laughs> no, uh, no. Alice, you need the seatbelts because it's going to yeah. be such a thrill ride. That's true. <laughs> Very good. And Haley, what do you have? So let me walk you guys through this. Please. Uh, Nemesis, Battle for Paradise has begun. It's a lot of green, reminds you of Paradise. Uh -huh. Okay. And then the last one, Star Trek, The Undiscovered Country, the human adventure is just the beginning. Very well. Well, uh, <laughs> very well, very well, very well. Very well, well. well Haley, I, I, I don't think you got any of those <laughs> correct. Uh, <laughs> uh, very well. Zach, uh, you got four of these what? correct. What? Uh, oh, and man. Alex, uh, you got two of these right. Uh, right I, I'm, I'm what? That. But uh, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual answers, just so you can check me and make sure I didn't miscount one of yours. So, uh, why are they putting seatbelts in the theater this summer uh, is, uh, uh, is our first one there. The battle for paradise has begun. A generation's final journey begins. The human adventure is just the beginning. The future begins, and the battle for peace has begun. There's a lot of beginning oh, yeah. uh, for uh, generally across the Star Trek uh, canon. Battles, beginning. things that are yeah. final, things that are beginning. Well, we made a couple of mistakes and you caught them. Here are some of our favorite corrections from you. At Jordan Sandfur says, Trap says Thanos should have wished the universe was 50% larger to support all life, but simple math suggests he must ask to make it 100% larger to double the size. This is correct, I just flubbed it in the moment. I will give you 50% more points than usual, or 300 points. And from our exclusive dropout Discord, Capin says, Um, actually, there are no female gnomes in Gravity Falls. This is why the gnomes are attempting to find a queen or bride in the episode. The book entry for gnomes also only mentions them as small men if you pause the show to read it. And you know, I didn't. One point for you. Seer of Mind 413 says, Um, actually, lion turtles are also energy benders in addition to Avatar Aang and Avatar Korra. I'm so sorry for leaving out the lion turtles. Great, well, we'll move on to our next question right. here. In the series Godzilla Island, most of the world's monsters have been rounded up to live together on a single island. When the Exilians invade Earth, they start with Godzilla Island, sending kaiju to destroy its denizens, creating more of the classic soupmation fight sequences that Godzilla fans crave. Um, actually, they destroy some kind of city first. Uh, no, incorrect. Um, actually, it's an archipelago. <laughs> it's a series of islands. Um, no, it is, it is an island. It is an island. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, actually, they went there of their own accord. <laughs> they, they, no one made us live here. It's just a cool <laughs> place to live. How do you make all right. the monsters live on an island? Uh, Laws. <laughs> <laughs> a, bi a big boat. <laughs> you guys have to. You have to. It's the law. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, actually, it's animated. Uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh. You know what? Close enough. I'm gonna yeah, count it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there is no, there's no soup nation. Uh, there's no soup. Nation. Yeah. No soup nation. No soup nation. Uh, uh, no, no soup nation. For you. <laughs> <laughs> what up, all my soup fans? Welcome to Soup Nation. <laughs> Celery. <laughs> Cauliflower. Everyone's favorite soup. The first soup they think of. <laughs> Celery. <laughs> it is not um, animated in the traditional sense. It's they largely use action figures uh, and uh, yeah. just use action figures wow. to sort of uh, with like hands. No, they kind not, of do stop motion. Yeah, yeah. like stop motion. And uh, and in fact. Um, uh, uh, many of the monsters were summoned from a toy vending machine in space. Yeah, that sounds uh, right. Just, uh, <laughs> just sort of like, kind of like acknowledge that like these are toys these that we're playing toys. with, and they just like come out of a big floating toy vending machine. I like this premise of like making all the monsters live on one island. It feels like a like a like, like a, a battle royale, battle royale, or even <laughs> yeah. like a like a like a real world or Big Brother road rules kind of thing. <laughs> it's just sort of, it's like, what happens when all the monsters in the world like <laughs> Monster yeah. Island? The yeah. challenge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, great. Well, that. Uh, that point will go to Haley. Are you stressed? Tired? Just don't feel like cooking? Well, guess what? Food that's fast doesn't have to be fast food. Freshly offers chef-made, nutrient-packed, delicious meals delivered fresh to your door with no cooking required. None. 
Grocery shopping, cooking, it can be a pain sometimes, but with Freshly, you get cooked, fresh, ready to eat meals delivered right to your door every single week. Ordering is easy. Just visit Freshly.com and choose from over 30 delicious, satisfying, better for you meals like steak peppercorn, sausage baked penne, or their chicken pesto bowl. Freshly can fit your lifestyle because they have plans and meals that fit your dietary needs and preferences and family size and tastes. And now our listeners can try Freshly for just $6.16 per meal. Stop searching for healthy food near me. Let the healthy food come to you instead. Your meals are always delivered fresh, not frozen, and are ready to heat and enjoy in just three minutes. Right now, Freshly is offering our viewers $40 off their first two orders by going to Freshly.com slash Actually. Stop stressing about dinner. Go to Freshly.com slash Actually and you'll get $40 off your first two orders. One more time, $40 off your first two orders just by going to Freshly.com slash Actually. Vampires in the Twilight novels are famously unharmed by sunlight, sparkling in the sun instead of burning into a pile of ash. They are also immune to crosses, silver, and garlic, and the only way to kill them is to drive a stake through their heart. Yeah. Um, actually, I think you can, like, just physically, like, I think one vampire kills another by, like, beating him to death. <laughs> right? Just, like, I think they just kind of fight until one dies yeah. in, the, in the first <laughs> What do you mean? Anyway. Like, they just get, 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 like, punched enough, and then it's like, yeah, he's dead now. Well, it's like, you know, the way you would beat a person. <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of happens to a vampire. Vampires, they're just like us. <laughs> yeah. You can just, with enough trauma, kill a vampire. You just you just beat them hard enough and then the vampire's dead. <laughs> right. I'm gonna yeah. say no. I'm gonna say no to that. Uh, um, actually, <laughs> yeah. you, a, a werewolf can also kill them. I'm just pulling this from Tales from the Crypt. While it might be true that a werewolf could kill them by certain methods, uh, not not wooden stake. Not, to clarify, in beating case them to just, death. Yeah, <laughs> by, 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 a by werewolf, good old fashioned. A werewolf is fucking fists of furry. You can take away one of my points. Yeah, we for might that. have. I'm yeah. <laughs> um, um, actually the, the the vampires can die of some kind of like broken heart emotional trauma kind of thing. <laughs> Because this is such a romantic world. Yeah. Uh, it's just, just they feel so hard. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hemolacry. No, <laughs> no. I want to say, Zach, that you were getting closer. I just need more specifics here. And it's, the answer, mm. it, it is true that, that there is like, there is a method by which you can kill them. It's not just like beating the crap out of them. Oh. Yeah. Um, Zach, what is it? Um, actually, if you take their head off. They yeah, die. that's what I was going to uh, say. Yes, that's what we're looking for. Okay. So uh, When you beat them to death and you take their head off. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, right. That's only half correct. Okay, mm. oh, oh um, actually, for the other half a point, yeah. you have to cut it off uh, with a silver steely... <laughs> Knife. <laughs> steely With a steely dan. <laughs> <laughs> steely dan. Uh, the vampires covered. have one weakness. <laughs> sort of steely a dad dan. Yeah. <laughs> the second part I was looking for was um, was that they have to be dismembered and then set on fire. Yeah. Oh, uh, this wow. is a, this is a, yeah. That's a this lot. This is a two-step process. And this is typically only seen as being possible by werewolves. Uh, that like werewolves are perhaps the only beings who are strong enough to actually be mm. able to like dismember do, them. Dismember and and set them on uh, fire. Got it. I'm gonna say no points for no that. No soup nation one. for you. No um, points for you. We were guessing anyway. No soup nation. <laughs> Strategy classic Command and Conquer Red Alert takes place in an alternate universe where an American general has used a device called the Chronosphere to go back in time and eliminate Hitler before his rise to power. Um, actually, it's Einstein going back in time? That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I didn't understand anything from the question. <laughs> not a single word. <laughs> uh, it is not an American general who goes back in time to stop Hitler. It's Albert Einstein. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's great. He's a very active figure in that universe. <laughs> he, he, like, wow. kills Hitler, I think. It's crazy. <laughs> wow. Is that, is that, like, in the game, like, Albert Einstein kills Hitler? I'm pretty sure, or else, or else he, like, orchestrates it or something. He's not much of a patent clerk at all. It's also, it's basically blaming Albert Einstein. Einstein for like <laughs> ruining the world because then suddenly the Soviets are way more powerful because they don't fight Hitler and then you get a whole thing going on where it's his fault. Einstein yeah. started that arms race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Th that's also like weird because it's like it's not like the Cold War didn't exist. You know like right. it, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like man can you imagine the alternate history where the U.S. and the Soviet Union were locked in some sort of bitter dispute. It's like, it's like yeah you didn't need to make Einstein go back in time to kill Hitler to make that happen. <laughs> The work was done. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of the scariness is like the Soviets dominate a lot of Europe, and it's like, yeah, the Eastern Bloc. Yeah, 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 I heard that of all it. happened. That was a thing. But <laughs> well, just wait until they move into Asia. <laughs> right. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. 
Uh, well, that's a point for Alex. Very good. Well, this is a game we're calling Order Up. So on the other side of this uh, board, you have uh, a group of things that we want you to put in a specific order. And those things are aliens. And that specific order is by size. Uh, so we would like you to, um, uh, to take a look at these aliens and arrange them in order from smallest to largest. Go ahead and flip it over here. So, Alex, tell us what order these should be in. I did Space Amoeba, Arquillian, Zergling, Bioraptor, Sarlacc, Cromulon. Uh, and I feel okay about it. Zach, <laughs> show us what you got. Space Amoeba. Mm. I think it's a classic misdirect. Amoeba, but large. Maybe it's also a double misdirect. Maybe it's actually tiny. Are you arranging these from largest to smallest? This is largest to smallest. Okay. Uh, I asked for smallest to largest, but it's good to can know. Can I that... just? Yeah, can, yeah you can do that. Okay? that That's fine. All right. So I'm saying this is the largest. Okay, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Second largest, Cromulon. Third largest, Sarlacc. Uh, third smallest, <laughs> Iraptor. Second smallest, Zergling. Smallest, the Archelian. Very good. And then Haley. I did exactly the same as Alex, just with these two reversed that was at the last second. Okay. And so, could be bad. Cool. So this is fun. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> this is fun. This is fun. Um, Alex, you were close, but you had one out of place that shifted almost everything else in your thing to be incorrect. No. Uh, so you, in fact, only have one correct. <laughs> um, uh, Haley, you have two correct. And Zach, you have four correct. Again. So let's, nice. uh, let's take a look at this order. Indeed, uh, that, that Space Amoeba oh. was a bit of a, a, a fuck around. So it should be uh, the Archelian first. Yeah. Um, and because you had your Space Amoeba in the wrong place, because you fell for our, our, little, our yeah. little trap, that shifted ah. everything. But Archelian, Zergling, Bioraptor, Sarlacc. The Space Amoeba is quite large. So mm -hmm. it's a very large thing. That's, that's from Star Trek. And then Cromulon, who is planet sized. Yes. Archelian's the thing from Men in Black that gets stabbed in the neck and is like. <laughs> Inside the like human suit. That is correct. <laughs> well, that's what he was. I was like, why is he so familiar? Uh, why does he yeah. look like shit? What is he? Why is he he's like, dying. That looks like fucking ass. Yeah. <laughs> you got a buddy? The, the yeah. Roach guy. I always thought looked like Steve Bannon. Yes, he does. I think he does. does. I yeah. really does. does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no, and sure. legal. That's not slander. We're allowed to say that because it's true. No uh, matter what your politics, we can agree on this. that. We can mm. all agree. Steve Bannon is a cockroach monster from outer <laughs> space wearing a human skin suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for a break part <laughs> 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 on internet. I need soft water. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're not perfect here either, and I make a mistake sometimes, too. If you notice something that I got wrong, you can correct me by tweeting at um Actually Show or by going to our exclusive Dropout Discord and correcting me there. If you like what you have to say, we might feature it in a future episode and give you a point. All right, well, we will All move right. on to the next statement here. Besides the obvious similarity in title, Deep Space Nine and Babylon 5 had a remarkable number of things in common. Both shows took place on a space station serving as a hub for a variety of alien species. Both featured a recently widowed commander. Both had an idealistic doctor hiding illegal genetically engineered abilities. Both shows even featured the exact same actor playing a high-ranking officer who attempts a coup of Earth's government. Um, actually, one is not a space station. They're both space stations, yeah. Um, actually, Captain Cisco is not recently widowed. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Get over it, Cisco, you piece <laughs> right. of shit. You're over here moping around the station. Get over it. Rub people some die. dirt on it and move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, sometimes people just get beaten to death, and that's fine. Get over it. Uh, no, that's not what we're going for. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, actually, one of the doctors doesn't have this genetic engineering special power. Uh, that's correct. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, digging back into the tiny scraps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gonna get those sweet, sweet points. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Dr. Julian Bashir of Deep Space Nine was illegally genetically enhanced. Yeah, Dr. Stephen of Franklin of, of, of Babylon 5 participated in a kind of underground railroad for human telepaths. He sort of like helped them. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. That's his deep flaw. 
<laughs> yeah. How dare you help these people? Well, they both had a secret that they were doing. They both, had, they both were sort of uh, hiding something. There are a lot of people who claim that that uh, Deep Space Nine is is a like deliberate and direct um, uh, rip off of Babylon Five because um, the creator of Babylon Five like pitched it out to whoever the, yeah. it was at the time, I think CBS. Oh. Uh, and they were like, no, thank you, we'll pass, we'll pass. And then while it was in production, they are like, cool, we got to work on this new Star Trek, and it's, uh, uh, it has all these things, <laughs> and it has all these similarities to it. So people, people uh, I think there might have even been a lawsuit about it. It's just like, hey, this is <laughs> our idea. You just put a Star Trek skin on top of it. <laughs> and we changed the number. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's not a Babylon 5, it's a 9. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we'll move on here. Uh, and here's a Harry Potter question. Many of the dark wizards in Harry Potter once attended Hogwarts, like Bellatrix Lestrange, Vincent Crabbe, and Electo Caro. Interestingly, every dark wizard who attended the wizarding school was sorted into House Slytherin or Gryffindor. There are no known dark wizards from Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff. Um, actually, Electo Caro didn't attend Hogwarts. Uh, incorrect. Dang. Hmm. Yes, Alex. um, actually, uh, Electo Caro was a Ravenclaw? Uh, no, no. Hmm. 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 <laughs> um, actually, there were wizards from the other two schools. <laughs> to, to, uh, to, you know, that is houses. far too broad. I'll need you to be more specific. Uh, there were, um, actually, there were dark wizards from Ravenclaw. That's correct. Ah! Hey. Hey. Can you name one? Uh, I'll, I'll give it to you unless someone else can name one. Or if you can name one. Um, actually, yeah. well, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of the dark <laughs> wizards was the, the, the third person you named. Electo Caro again? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was Bellatrix Lestrange. Uh, no. Damn. Yeah. You know, Alex, you got, a, you got a guesser there? How about a, a Crab Hufflepuff? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> now we're getting no, further. No, no, no. <laughs> Crab Hufflepuff sounds like a snack. <laughs> it sounds like it's something you order off a dim sum cart. Oh my god! <laughs> For some reason, when you Crab said that, Hufflepuff. I was like, oh, a snack? Like, like Ooh, <laughs> Crab Hufflepuff sounds like a snack. <laughs> Crab is thick and can get it. <laughs> Zag, you you fully guessed that, but whatever. Uh, uh, we'll get the point. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, there, uh, we we know of a dark wizard from Ravenclaw, uh, uh, it, Quirinus Quirrell, who is uh, oh, in uh, in the very Ray first Whirl. book. Quirrell was yeah. a Ravenclaw, and he full on had Voldemort growing out of his head. So, um, point for Zach. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was also a snag. He was also a snag. <laughs> Two heads for one. My my. <laughs> the way that white man rocked that turban. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, if someone stepped up and stopped him from appropriating yeah. it, yeah, yeah. this is yeah. the whole thing. He wouldn't have anything to hide. He just yeah. have a baseball hat. <laughs> <laughs> He's got like a trucker hat. Yeah, Voldemort's just like staring through the hat. mesh. He's like, what's going on out there? <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to play a game called Title of Words. Uh, now, uh, a what lot a of... What a creative this game. Well, you see, a lot of, uh, of sci-fi and fantasy novels have titles that are like a blank of something, a thing of something oh. else. Oh, yeah. uh, so what we've done is we've taken six real titles of, of novels with that structure, and we've taken all the nouns and we've jumbled them all up. And it's up to you to put them in the order that actually reflects titles of books that actually exist in the world. Uh, whoever gets the most will get the point. And go ahead and flip those over and take a look. Look at all these nouns. Uh, great. As before, we'll go down the line. Alex, tell us what books are out there in the world. What What do you know? So these are definitely books. Okay. Uh, we've got <laughs> The Pearls of Lutra, mm -hmm. The Robots of Dawn, The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, The Boat of Gifts, Gods of the Kingdom, Ooh. and A War of a Million Years. All right. Uh, Zach. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Palmer Eldritch of the Three Stigmata, <laughs> the Pearls of the of God, <laughs> the Robots of the Boat, <laughs> a War of a Million Years, Gifts of Lutra, the Kingdom of Dawn. 
Uh, very <laughs> good. And Haley, what do you have? All right. I weirdly it was close to th with Alex again. The Pearls of Lutra, A War of oh. a Million Years, The Boat of Gifts. <laughs> <laughs> how Santa arrives to people who live in the sea. And <laughs> the robots of gods, the three stigmata of Palmer Eldridge, and the kingdom of dawn. Very good. Can I just real quick yes. make a guess about one? Because I just real remembered it. Sure. The Pearls of Lutra is a red wall book. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm going to let you have that because you're still in last place. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't mean for oh, points. No. I just wanted to see if I had it right. I... <laughs> You're telling me the robots of the boat is wrong? <laughs> uh, I rowboat. <laughs> okay, well, Zach, if we're counting the pearls of Lutra, uh, you had one. If not, you had the zero <laughs> correct. Um, uh, Haley, you had two correct. Again. Uh, uh, and Alex, you had three correct. Hey, um, no. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at what these should be. It should be the Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, the Robots of Dawn, the Pearls of Lutra, a War of Gifts, the Man. Boat of a Million Years, and the Kingdom of Gods. Wow. So I had Palmer Eldritch of the Three Stigmata, that's not the Three thing. Stigmata of <laughs> Palmer right. Eldritch. That's, that's a very different thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Palmer Eldritch the of the Three, three Stigmata. stigmata. Some cultures say it differently, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, well, that point will go to Alex. I feel solid about the robots of gods. <laughs> it reminds me of like, it sounds like a retelling of like uh, Greek mythology, but in the future with robots. Yeah, <laughs> the robot, exactly. <laughs> Zeus bot versus <laughs> Hades bot? Poseidon bot immediately short circuits like, yeah. as soon as it hits the water. Go to the sea! <laughs> <laughs> Smoke billowing out. Aphrodite is casual sex robot. Yes. Oh. Aphrodite is just a vibrator. Future sex robot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is our last question. This is, as always, about real life skills. If you don't have sterile water to drink in an emergency, you can run water through a coffee filter or clean cloth and then boil it for one to three minutes. If you can't boil water, you can use bleach instead. Add any chlorine bleach to water using an eyedropper, roughly two drops per quart if it's 6% sodium hypochlorite, or slightly less if it's 8.25%. Stir in the bleach, let it stand for 30 minutes, and the water should be drinkable. Add it, yes. I'm actually... You can't use bleach. <laughs> you can use bleach. It's fucked up. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, no. actually, you need to boil it longer. Uh, no. No. Um, actually, it's four drops per quart. Uh, no. Dang. Yeah. Zach. Um, actually, you can drink it right away. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Don't wait for anything. <laughs> just, just, just like, it's, like, it's like, yeah, I like stirred a nice cocktail. It's like, do you stir it up? Uh, no, no, that's not correct. Uh, I will go ahead and call that, because also because this one is uh, extremely nitpicky anyway. Wow, yeah, what is it? Uh, so uh, I said that you can use any chlorine bleach uh, uh, for this, but that's not true. Uh, you don't want to use any that have any added cleaners, any added scents. Oh. Any uh, or any that are marked as color safe, um, because those have chemicals in them that that will be extremely harmful. But if you have just like a plain uh, a chlorine bleach, you can actually use that in an emergency to uh, to sterilize the water. Yeah. Well, wow, earthquake safe. Earthquake safe. <laughs> a lot of people will put bleach in earthquake kit kits for just this uh, purpose, but they do expire after a certain point. So you, oh. you like if you do have bleach in your earthquake kit, you'll have to uh, swap it out periodically. Oh wow. Well. I don't think we should tell people that. There's no way I don't fuck that up. That's, you know what? I think that's fair. Because like, even like reading this, it would be like one of those things where like, it's like, I don't trust the internet. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, I'm not gonna, no, this isn't gonna work. There's too much that. actual science class memories in my head of like, well, I fucked that experiment up. Oh, yeah, to sure. like, to yeah, like yeah. bet on my life. Yeah, we're like, you're in like yeah. the science lab and it's just like, cool, do this. And then this is the result you should get. It's like, I did not get not that, that result. <laughs> That's not what happened. Stupid titration yeah. lab. Yeah, exactly. Like, Wait, it just went to bright pink. Well, you screwed it up, gotta start all over. Uh, yeah. By the way, why wouldn't you just put iodine tablets in your earthquake kit. That's probably better. Uh, <laughs> I don't, don't yeah. want to put bleach in my water. Hey, look, I'm just saying, like, you're, it, if it's dire straits, if you're looking for something, this, this, is, uh, this is a thing that you can do. Also, I feel like the way my memory is going to encode this is going to be like, okay, I Drink boil it. Drink bleach. And then, <laughs> right. <laughs> 
<laughs> or like, I boil it, then I use the filter. Then Quirrell was in Ravenclaw. And then, <laughs> and I'm gonna be, nah, gonna I don't, be I don't remember how this goes. <laughs> yeah. Alfred Einstein, what do I do? <laughs> Albert Einstein went back in time and killed Alfred Steve Einstein. Bannon. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's a paradox, so I should put two drops of water in bleach and down it goes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I believe that makes Zach our winner of this match. Yeah. Uh, with four points, three points for Haley and Alex each, making them tied for second. Thank you all for joining us for this episode, for playing with us and going on whatever this weird fever dream was. Uh, and thank you for watching it. Uh, you can uh, join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Yeah.